asking for it, so here it is. We have Eric's 2012 four-door JK. Uh, completed back about six months ago or so, I believe. Lots of modifications to this rig. This is a 2012, was a six-speed manual 3.6 engine. And it has a now L96 six-liter Chevrolet engine with a Texas speed cam. Bushing trunnion kit. Fresh set of head gaskets and bolts. VVT delete. We'll start from the front here. That metal cloak overline fender flares with the metal cloak three piece inner fender kit. This is a Fox factory series 2.5 cool over, 14 inch travel using Barnes upper cool over mounts. And you can see right in here Jesse built that little box to protrude back in to give us some clearance for the steering gear because this has the big bore steering. You can see it through there. So that uh, coilover tower has been notched for clearance there. Fox bump stops. This is a RPM steering track bar relocation bracket. This has the Yeti bottom mount XD drag link, a 7075 custom tie rod with Barnes offset heim joints. Of course, you can see the PSC ram there lingering. It's uh, been recycled a few times throughout the build, but it's got a rock solid fabrication out of Chattanooga, Tennessee uh, skid plate for the ram. Fits this XD60 really nice. Give Tyler a call down there if you're looking for one of those. Wide open design limit straps. You can see those right here. This is a Dynatrack XD60 538 gear ARB with the 1550 outer wheel ends, aluminum knuckles. Worn Xeon 12S winch with a rigid 10 inch light over the fair lead with a factor 55 flat link. That is all tucked in there to a VKS Fab V3 bumper with the hoop. Let's see right here, we now have an automatic transmission cooler and a power steering cooler. JW speaker marker and turn lamps, rigid truck light LED headlights. Check out the tires there. Those are 42 inch Maxxis sticky trips. So Maxxis Trepador sticky. Wrapped around a 17 by eight and a half trail ready HD 17 beadlock with a World Series ring. And of course this axle has the Dynatrack stub hub kit. Moving along the side, we've got the original Off-Road Evolution Evo rock skins with their original logo there, still on there from uh, a while back. VKS standard rock sliders. These are JCR off-road aluminum half doors, color matched red. Of the non-functioning rugged ridge snorkel that used to be for the 3.6 V6 engine. Now breathing heavy from under the hood is the L96 
six liter Chevrolet engine. We got some 2016 Rubicon heated leather seats swapped in front and rear. Here's your C pillar brace from Rock Hard 4x4. This is a Rock Hard 4x4 bolt in cage. Extends from the rear all the way to the front. The center bars are red and all the other bars are a matte black to reduce reflection. This thing is running the mirrors from Skosh Industries with the 1.75 clamp. Nice little mirror. He's got the ram mount one inch ball mount with an arm and a mount for his tablet running lifetime trail maps. Console out of a 2016 swapped in here, so an automatic transmission console now. You can see the levers for the Atlas transfer case. I don't quite remember what ratio that transfer case was. We'll get back to that here shortly. This one has some cowl armor from the previous owner. Fire extinguisher mounted up here. A nice duster cover. Uh, luggage tray uh, custom built, just like a one-off for this application. Fits right above the duster cover. Everything in the back can stay sealed up. And it's locked. It's a uh, Let's get up here and unlock that for you. That unlocked and it's hard to tell. There's so much equipment and tools back here, but we've got the ARB twin compressor and manifold with both the air locker solenoids mounted in here. And this is a tower closeout box. Uh, this box back here behind the compressor, you can see pointing to it right there. And then right here, you've got a top plate where the strut tower brace comes up through here and extends to the other side. To support the top of those rear mounts. Those rear mounts are Artec Industries uh, builder mounts. Here's the uh, in the wheel well view of that. This is also a Fox factory series two and a half coil over with Artec tall towers. Um, Frenched, not Frenched, I'm sorry. They're, they're welded onto the frame. And that's a whole nother story. We'll get to that rear frame section here in just a minute. But you can see right here, the body has been cut out. Uh, a big, nice uh, cube to allow clearance for that coilover tower and the coilover to stand up through there. And you can see the bottom of that mount, there's some rubber used as a gasket. And then you have these two coilover uh, tabs mounted to the top here that go through that rubber gasket to the interior of the Jeep to uh, tie into that strut tower brace. This is an Evo builder rear corner. So they have a little tab that comes out normally with a hole in it for a flag or CB antenna or whatever. That was trimmed off, has a Mopar fuel filler door. These are just some standard truck light, four and a half inch, I'm sorry, four inch uh, flush mount LED brake turn lights. That rear bumper is a moto built bumper. And as you can see right here, it's got the backup camera mounted into there. And oh yeah, what's that? That is a rear mounted tank from moto built. This Jeep's equipped with the moto built back half kit. So what that is, is the rear frame section I'll show you the frame from the bumper all the way up here, down here, all the way to right about there. You can see where it's uh, welded together. There's fish plates on certain areas, but this frame is completely new from this section. So right here under the, under the rear door. From the rear door all the way to the back of the Jeep is a new frame section. It's narrowed for coilover clearance. And then the tank, of course, is rear mounted now. Uses a factory fuel pump. And this is a Genrite rear sway bar. 
So that sway bar extends above the tank, goes to the other side, and then the arms come out here and tie into the axle down here on these tabs. Of course, more Fox bumps over there. And here's your sway bar link and the brake lines are routed uh, forward. That way a rock cannot come up here in this area and bash that brake line like they have on, on my personal shop Jeep. So real, some good thoughts been put into this. Of course, wide open design rear limit straps along with those Fox bump stops. These are Kentroll tailgate hinges with a Kentroll tag mount. So you've got a third brake light here, a license plate light here that shines down with the lights on. These are those little things. I forgot who makes those. That's a UFO, I believe it's called. If you Google that, just say UFO JK tailgate delete plugs, I believe. But yeah, you can see the evidence of no more 3.6 engine. This is not a 3.6. Probably ought to get a little sticker out there. That way people know what we're talking about. If you see him on the trail, say, hey, what's, what's no to 3.6 mean? Drive him crazy. Check this thing out on Instagram. Follow him. It's called at redhead mistress JK, I believe. Something to that effect. But man, this thing's got a, a tough stance. Tires are humongous. Low center of gravity. I think it's running uh, three to four inches up travel. And the rest is down travel. Wicked cool Jeep right there. Let's get underneath this Jeep and show you a few things. So as you can see here on the back side of the front axle, we've got the coilover mounts. They run down the side of the tube to help give this thing a low center of gravity, uh, keep low, low height. Um, the link mounts, you can see them right here. They're almost flush with the tube. They don't hang down at all, hardly. Um, this is a engine skid that Jesse fabbed up that ties into this other skid plate, which is a 7075 Genrite skid plate. And you can see that drops down just a little bit, not very far, but gives ample clearance for the 6L80 transmission and that six liter GM engine. Here's looking from the front toward the rear. Look at that skid plate, man, it's, it's flat, thick slide over lots of stuff there's the front view that is a dynatrack pro rock 80 running 1350 shafts front and rear this is a double triangulated rear suspension setup no track bar tucked up here is the atlas transfer case you can see the uh, h pipe crosses over under the rear output and that's wrapped with some heat heat wrap to keep the things cool underneath that CV and around the transfer case. Spintech mufflers, both of them dump right after that Genrite skid plate. This is also a Genrite-esque rear link mount and cross member with some Barnes parts on it. They link into the side of the frame here. The uppers do and you can see this one actually still has parking brake cables so they're routed here with some trick tabs on the lower control arms nothing hanging down below the axle back here either this tube here was added just to give it a little more frame rigidity back here for this motor built back half um, sorry this thing's dirty under here, but we've got the frame that extends down here and then goes along the front and of course mounts to the original frame right there. Here's that Motobilt fuel cell and a rear view of that Dynatrack Pro Rock 80 538 ring and pinion disc brakes, ARB, 
big boy. Have some rigid industry ditch lights pointing down here on the side. With some ditch light mounts. Lots of metal's been trimmed for these tires to clear. This thing does incredible on the trail. Let's open up the hood and see what we have. Oh yeah. Alright, so here is your L96 Chevrolet engine. This one has a set of Sanderson headers. I do believe that's what those are. I believe that was a Sanderson. This is kit is using the integration kit and harness from RPM Extreme. Got their E38 controller right here. Piggyback to the factory controller. Um, here is your reservoir for the PSC. This one has a, this is a truck engine, so that's why the intake is tall and the brackets over here on this side and the alternator's up high out of the way. This is a, a radiator also from RPM Extreme. A large aluminum bodied radiator. Here's your pressure retaining valve for the PSC. That keeps, I think, just a few PSI pressure into the line for the cap and reservoir to keep the power steering from foaming. This one's running a North Star Group 34 Marine battery, so it's got some 34 posts, but it also has the Marine posts. You can see there's a lot going on right there. There's a, a host of things. And then there's a 100 amp resettable circuit breaker in this wire here feeds everything in the rear. This is the overflow for the radiator. Air intake down here in this corner. S-Pod back here in the back, you can see it tucked back here. This is a Mopar big brake master cylinder and booster kit. We'll get some more views of this engine for you. We're now sitting in the control center of the Jeep. Uh, you can see right here looking out of the front window, we've got our mirror over here to the side. Scotia Industries, we've got a rock hard accessory clamp with a ram mount. You stick your phone in here, captures your phone. Another ram mount for his lifetime trail maps Samsung tablet. Kenwood head unit. Atlas transfer case shifters. Again, console out of a 2016, so this was a conversion from a six-speed manual. Now it has a GM six-speed automatic transmission. Up here we have our controls for the S-Pod. Have air compressor, front locker, rear locker, ditch lights, front bumper light and then rock lights. Uh, I believe those rock lights are Lux lighting. Above mounted to the roll bar is a 25 watt waterproof VHF radio from Rugged Radios with the magnetic mount or magnetic mic mount from I think it's his name's Brian. He's a used to be a city of Knoxville police officer, and he and his family invented the magnetic mic. We stock these if you want to check those out. They're also sold on Amazon, but why would you ever do that? Come, come, give us a call. They're thirty-five dollars, I believe. Leather seats from that 2016 Jeep. Uh, 